Hey YouTube, Mr. Terry back here once again with another History Teacher Reacts video. Today um, I will be watching my easily most uh, requested video um, that I get in the comment section. That is History of the uh, Entire World, I Guess, by Bill Wirtz. Now, the reason I have waited a long time to do this is because I have seen this video. Um, I've seen this video a bunch of times. And um, I wasn't sure if you know, I should uh, do reactions or commentary videos I've, I've seen before, and why not, right? I mean, I'm telling you right right away that, you know, I have seen this, but this is a video that I, you know, every time I watch, there's always a little something you pick up and, and things like that, um, but it is the most dense video um, on the history of the world that I've can conceive of <laughs> and if you've seen this you know exactly what i'm talking about now um i did do a reaction video to bill wertz's um earlier uh, uh history video of this of this style the history of japan and again that was one i had watched before but you know i got a lot of people that wanted to see it um and uh it's it's fantastic um it's totally in a fast-paced style with a lot of humor and things like that um and it's great with the younger um younger audiences, the, you know, teenage, young adult audiences. Um, and this is something I show in my classes just because it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's super pass, uh, or fast paced. In fact, what I actually like to do, I like to play this on basically day one of my world history class and uh, just tell the, tell the, um, tell the students, all right, I'm going to go ahead and play you a 20 minute video. That's basically going to cover everything that we're going to do this year. Plus some. And uh, you're probably, it's probably going to go way over your head now, but um, hey, it's a great introduction. And then I show it on the last day of the year, and I just try to uh, encourage them. I'd be like, all right, so we watched this on the first day, right? And we've now spent months, right? Months and months studying history. Um, as we watch this, let's look at it again and say, all right, how much of this do you actually remember now? How much of it is familiar to you? And you can't expect, you know, students to know all of these things that are in this because, again, there's so much. But it is fun to see them make those connections um, at the end of the year. And it's 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 a uh, it's a lot of fun to do. So we'll go ahead and get this playing. Now, this is one of the very few videos that I have. If I don't think anything other than the other Bill Wirtz video that does have some profanity in it. So um, just keep that in mind if you are watching in a place that might be inappropriate for that, but I wanted to put that out there too. Now, of course, I'm going to put a link to the original video um, down below. Uh, Bill Wirtz is a pretty uh, low-key guy. He doesn't come out and talk about things in public or really try to capitalize on this that much, even though he could because it's a, it's a total viral video. But um, if you do enjoy this video, make sure you go support him um, by even just, just giving him a, a view like subscribe uh, because it's definitely deserving so i don't know how much i want to like stop in this because i mean it's a 20 minute video and if i'm stopping on each point i mean it will it'll never get through with it so i'll just try to keep an honest reaction to some things of my thoughts but i think for the most part this will play a lot about more a lot more so um it's really not set up to be the video where i can really add a lot to it especially a lot of teaching moments so um either way so this is a little bit different but let's go ahead and get started with history of the entire world i guess hi you're on a rock floating in space pretty cool huh some of it's water fuck it actually most of it's water i can't even get from here to there without buying a boat it's sad i'm sad i miss you how did this happen a long time ago actually never and stage. also now nothing is nowhere when never makes sense right like i said it didn't happen nothing was never anywhere that's why it's been everywhere. It's been so everywhere, you don't need a where. You don't even need a when. That's how every it gets. So, every time I show this, this first um, few seconds, you know, where it, it, it almost, to, to somebody it might sound like gibberish. I don't think it is. Um, because when you're talking about the history of the entire world, I mean, he's talking about the history of origin of, of everything. Um, you start talking about uh, beginning of, of time and place and space and all these things, and even just the concepts even behind that, which you're really getting into a uh, almost philosophical realm um, with that. And uh, anyway, that that's a part that usually goes right over people's head. But if you understand it a little bit more, it, it's kind of interesting. Um, and there's a little bit more of that here too. 
or gets very deep into our concepts of just reality and time and things like that. Cause even those, those things are very, very mysterious to us. Well, very few pauses you get, right? Forget this. I want to be something, go somewhere, do something. I want things to change. I want to invent time and space. And I know it's possible because everything is here and it probably already happened. I just don't know when to start. And that's exactly where it started. Oh, I paused it. I think there's a universe now. What's it made of? Quarks and stuff. <laughs> ah, that's a thing. In a place. Don't like it? Try a new place. At a different time. Try to stick together because the world is going to get bigger and emptier. But it's not empty yet. It's still very full and about a jillion degrees. Great news. The quarks are now happily married in groups of three right. called a proton or a neutron. And there's something else flying around too Starting that wants to that. join in but can't because it's still too... Atomic structures here, right? Great news. The protons the and neutrons are now happily married to each other. Some of them even doubled up. Great news. Most the common elements have now joined in. The Congratulations. The world is now a bunch of gas in space. <laughs> but it's getting closer together. And it's getting closer together. And it's getting closer together. It's a storm. I mean, gravity, gravity is everything, right? It is, it is the driving force, basically, of all processes, right? Can't uh, um, skip over that. New shit just got made. Some stars burn out and die. Bigger more, stars burn out um, and die with passion and make some brand new, way crazier elements. shit. Which allows newer, more interesting stars to be made and then die and explode into So now stars have cool stuff around them, like rocks, ice, and funny clouds, which can make some very interesting things. Like this ball of flaming rocks, for example. Holy shit, we Here just we are. With another ball of flaming uh -oh. rocks. And it kind of made a mess, which is now Cretion disk, right? Whether Gravity, it's raining rocks creating from space. Uh, Weather update, those rocks might have had water inside them, and now there's hot steam in the everything. sky. Weather update, cooler temperatures today, and the floor is no longer lava. Weather mm -hmm. update, it's raining. Severe flooding wow, alert, we're the talking. entire world is now an ocean. Volcano alert. The amounts of time we can't even comprehend, what? really. Something's alive in the ocean. Oh, cool, like a plant or an animal? No, a microscopic speck. It lives at the bottom of the ocean and... You know, when we, we talk about interstellar travel and, and trying to find life in other uh, places, you know, I think a lot of people expect to see things like what they would consider impressive, you know, is uh, is human-like forms, right? When really it comes down to it, uh, finding something like this, a microscopic, you know, speck is uh, something that should be worth... Um, you know, being proud of, if that, of course, is ever fine. I mean, that would be groundbreaking because um, we don't find these things elsewhere. So it's going to be hard to find something so small in uh, places that we have no idea um, if it's possible or not for this kind of life to, to even happen. Um, because it's still very mysterious, of course, about how life can originate. What are the elements that can create this? Um, because it's still, uh, there's still a lot of work to do on that, for sure and eats chemical soup which is being served hot and fresh made from gnarly space ingredients left over from when it was raining rocks or whatever oh yeah and it can do that it that is the key stuff. right multiplication um replication um i should say here um that is what you know life has got to be so um those elements to be able to do that are uh um, really the most important thing in this history of uh the world in a way at least is relevant to us as life is when duplication was possible um, but again still so much mystery behind it about what uh what the what the uh environment was like at this time and what were those uh what were those processes that were available and um, can it actually be a common thing or or not written inside itself telling it how to build another one of itself so that's pretty nifty i would say tired of living at the bottom of the ocean now you can eat sunlight using a revolutionary technique you can convert sunlight into food Taste the sun. side effect now there's oxygen everywhere and the sky's blue right, then the right. earth might have been a snowball for a while maybe even a couple of times it's a sponge it's a plant it's a worm and some other types of weird strange water bugs and strange fish it's the cambrian explosion all kinds of different life forms wow that's animals and stuff and you all know if you know about geological time when you're talking about the cambrian explosion it's not some overnight thing you're still talking about uh lengths of time that are even hard to comprehend but in the geologic time scale it does kind of seem like an explosion you have to look through it at it from a totally different perspective though we're still in the ocean hey can we go on land no why the sun is a deadly laser okay <laughs> 
Animal, it now the animals can go on land. Come on, animals, let's go sense. on land. Nope, can't walk yet. And there's no food yet, so I don't care. Okay, will you learn to walk if there's plants up here? Maybe, said some bugs and fish. Mm. First life or uh, <laughs> uh, land creatures. Okay, so I can hard go on land, but I have to go back in the water to have a Learn to use an egg. Oh, be I was already doing that. Use a stronger egg. Put water in it. Have a baby on land in an egg. Water is in the egg. Huge baby part in of the egg, um, in the water in the egg. Works for me. Your life and being able to give birth safely. And now everything's huge, including bugs. Land, yeah. Want to see a map of the land? Sure. Stronger prevail. Oh fuck! Now everything's dead. Just kidding. Here are the survivors. Keep We're your eye on this one because it's about to become the dinosaurs. Here's another map of the land. Yeah, it broke apart. Don't worry about it. it does that all the time. Here comes a meteor. He's getting uh, these extinction events. It's right? mammal time. Here come the mammals. Look at those breasts. Now they're gonna dominate the world. And one of them just learned how to grab stuff and walk. Ooh, no, right. like, walk like that and grab stuff at the same time. Obvious and benefits there. To make pointed rocks. Survival. Ouch. And set things on fire. Ouch. And make yep. crazy sounds with their voice. <coughs> which can mean different things. That things that may seem little. That's a human person. But and now they're everywhere. Game changers. Almost. Ice age. What, you sound. can walk over here? Cool. Not anymore. Well, I guess we're stuck <laughs> here now. Let's review. Well, There's people though. on the planet, and they're chasing their food. Fuck it. Time to plant some grass. Look at this. I control the food now. Now everyone will want to be my friend and live near me. Let's all build houses, except mine is bigger because I own the food. This is probably the most important thing that's ever happened to our species. The ability to stay in one place, right? Because that changes everything. It changes uh, social interactions. Uh, it allows for completely different lifestyles. And when you look at human development... You know, when you look at uh, especially technological development and population, you know, if you're to make a, a, a graph, right, um, you have very slow development, right? And then, of course, when uh, especially specific with agriculture, um, domestication of plants and animals, that is what allowed the growth of technology and population. And you have a, a, a seemingly almost infinite stagnant, seemingly infinite, but very, very stagnant for so much geologic time, um, and specifically with, 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 uh, humans and their ancestors. And then once that sedentary lifestyle, it just boom, takes off. Right. And we still live in that and are still in the effects of that today. It's great. I wonder if anyone else is doing this. Tired of using rocks for everything? Place, Use metal. It's underground. It's obvious Better farming was just invented benefits. in the sweet dank valley right in between these two rivers. And the animals are helping. Guess what happens next? More food. And more people who came to buy the food. Now you need people to help make the food and keep track of the sales. And now you need houses for people to live in and people to make the houses. And now there's more people totally and they invent things, which makes things better. And more people come and there's more farming and more people to make more things for more people. And now there's business, money, writing, laws, power. Society. Coming soon to a dank river valley near you. This is new. Meanwhile, this is out in the middle of nowhere, the horse is probably being tamed. Why is all my metal so lame and lumpy? Tired of using lame, sad metal? Introducing bronze. Made with special ingredient tin from the far lands of tin land. I don't know, my dealer won't tell me where he gets it. Also, guess what? Egypt. Meanwhile, out in the middle of nowhere, they figured out how to put wheels on a horse. Now we're getting somewhere. Also, China. And did I mention? In this river valley civilization. Okay, it's important to also understand why these valleys let's get to just their little thing there okay so the four major early um civilizations here and i guess in that term civilization of course is can go to endless debates about what what uh, constitutes that uh look into that the you know a lot of historians agree upon certain features of civilization but that's a topic for another time but i think it is very important to understand the similarities among these societies right there are um, the four major ones here. Just going from west to east, you can see them kind of colored here. If you can see my mouse pointer, you got Egypt, right? Mesopotamia. You got the Indus Valley Civilization. And then up here, uh, you've got uh, in China. And so you have these uh, four um, early civilizations. Now, why there when not in other places? Geography. Uh, geography is the key to all of this. Okay. All four of them um, survive or developed in river valleys. Um, now, why river valleys? Because they provide everything that you need fresh water, irrigation, um, travel, potentially protection. And when you're talking about how important it is, or the, the important elements of developing civilization, especially with the limited technology and knowledge of these of these times, um, this is the seems to be the most beneficial geography there. And you see that popping up now. There's another thing that is uh, that you will find in common with these civilizations. 
they have a very similar line of latitude, okay, as you're going around the world. Um, and why? Well, this latitude, okay, what is it, about 20 degrees north, uh, between about 20 and 40, which is a, a real good zone, you get seasons, which are very important um, to crop cycles, okay? And also, it's not at such an extreme, um, this this uh, line of latitude, where you're not going to get the extreme colds and the extreme heat. And that is uh, really important, again, for, for crop development. Now, one other thing is, um, is when you have something at a similar climate, similar latitude, that makes trade better because what that means, especially with agriculture, that um, crops can grow in specific climates. So if you have these other civilizations, right, um, out here where you're going to get like Mesopotamia, most of the good plants and animals and things like that, uh, domesticated animals came out of that region. Those were easily spread east and west because of similar lines of latitude, which means similar climates, right? Something that might be able to grow in Mesopotamia pro can probably easily grow in a place like the Nile or the Indus River or going all the way to China. So you can see them grow uh, because they are in that awesome habitable zone. Now, they're going to throw in here in a second Norte Chico. And one of the um, great questions is, since there were people over the Americas, why didn't they develop as quickly, and especially with the domesticated animals and the um, crops that uh, they have over here in, in Eurasia? Well, it's, they didn't have them, right? Um, there's also, on this really great line of latitude, not a lot of physical land in the Americas. I mean, when you look at Eurasia here, and you can see it on the map, it's very much spread out east to west, uh, with, a, again, a lot of territory in that very favorable, favorable um, latitude. Uh, whereas in America, you don't have that, uh, because America is very thin when you talk uh, geographically from north to south. There's not a lot of that. Plus the fact that a lot of the good crops and good animals did not originate there, and basically none did. Um, you get, you know, after basically probably millennia of development, maybe, you know, corn or something like that. But among the earliest ones, no, it doesn't happen much. Plus, basically no domesticated animals. Not of the large ones that have multi-purpose use with both um, being able to eat them and milk them and work them. Um, they don't have any of those. I mean, the best work animal of any decent size in the Western Hemisphere was a llama. And they don't come close to the efficiency of um, sheep, horses, pig goats, cows, and things like that. So geographically blessed here. So it's not totally by luck and happenstance that these civilizations developed first. Okay. Now there is, of course, human element and human decision making and things like that that go behind this, but I don't think anything's more important than, than the geographic, uh, I don't want to call it luck, but definitely the geographic um, kind of scenario that these people were blessed to have. All right, talking too much. The Middle East is getting more complicated. Maybe because it's in the middle of the East. Knock, knock, or clock, Middle East clock. is uh, it's the people with the horses. Great geographically, empire, but not so fancy. Ah, look, it must Flash be the Greeks, bad or a beta version of the Greeks. Geography. Let's check in with the Indus River Valley civilization. They're gone. Yeah. Guess who's not gone? They went China. very quick. New arrivals in I mean, India. Maybe it's the first one. People are talking about or their cousins or something. Yeah, and these the you know Indo-European people that move in um, definitely are going to help be kind of a lot of the founders of sort of the modern um, India that you know of as they're going to come in and intermingle and those sort of things and find out that you know uh, they come over here and they're nomadic come into uh, northern India here and this looks like a place that is nice to settle and that's what they figured out okay these these lands like we're saying these four specific regions um are so good that it can make nomads want to give up that lifestyle and you see that happen a bunch of times especially here in ancient history and they wrote some hymns and mantras and stuff you could make a religion out of this i'm gonna spread the bronze age collapse now the phoenicians can get down to business also can we switch to a metal that's a little easier to find thanks look who came back to israel it's the 12 tribes of israel and they believe in god just one, though. He's got like a 10-step program. Here's some huge heads. Must be the Olmecs. The Phoenicians make some colonies. The Greeks copy their idea and make some colonies. The Phoenicians made a colony so big it makes colonies. Here comes the Assyrian Empire. Never mind, it's the Babylonian media. It's the Persian Empire. Middle East. The most... The area that has probably changed hands the most of anywhere. Um, if you heard me kind of on my breath, I know it's it's so fast-moving. The... The Middle East here, Mesopotamia, is a wonderful place of uh, for like ecology. OK, 
okay, especially at this time. You don't think a lot about that now because of the climate now is so arid, but um, a lot of that has to do with there's there's um, uh, changes in climate, but also over cultivation and just the fact that this has been yet yeah, lived on for for so long. And um, but back to the point, um, the one issue is although this is great for land and animals and climate and all that stuff, it has no natural protection, right? The Middle East here, this region, Mesopotamia, is right in the middle of the crossroads of Europe, Africa, and Asia, and don't have as many of the great defensive uh, like like barriers that some of these other have. I mean, over in Egypt, you've got deserts on both sides um, to, to help protect you there. You go over to India, you've got the Hindu Kush Mountains, and China is completely isolated with the Himalayas. This area just has a big target on its back, and that's why it changes uh, hands so often uh, back then. It's hard to keep up. Wow, that's big. Ah, oh, the Buddha was just enlightened. Who's the Buddha? This guy who sat under a tree for so long that he figured out how to ignore the fact that we're all dying. You can make a religion out of this. <laughs> Oops, China just Brilliant broke, but there. while it was breaking, Confucius was figuring out how to have good morals. Ah, the Greeks just had the idea of thinking about stuff. And right over here, Alexander just had the idea of conquering the entire Persian Empire. It's a great idea. He was great. And now he's dead. Hopefully the rest of the gang will be able to share the empire evenly between them. Knock knock, nope. it's Chandra Gupta. Breaks he says, get the hell out of here. Will you get the hell out of here if I give you 500 elephants? Okay, thanks, bye. Time to conquer all of Sort of the first real India. Indian emperor. Most of India. Marian dynasty. But what about this part? That's the Tamil kings. No one conquers the Tamil kings. Who are the Tamil kings? Merchants, probably. Nobody gets all of India, though. And they've got spices. Who would like to buy That's the spices? That's going to be very relevant here coming up. Swiftly buying it and selling it to the rest of the world. Hey, China put itself back together again with good morals as their main philosophy. Actually, they have three main philosophies. <laughs> Out here, the horse nomads run wild and free. We have great and discussions they like to about your city. legalism in our classes. Let's check the Greekification levels of the Greekified kingdoms. Greekification overload. Bye, said the Parthians. Bye, said the Jews. Hi, said the Parthians, taking over the entire place. Hey, said the Romans, eating the entire Mediterranean for breakfast. Thanks for invading our homeland, said the Jews, who were starting to get tired of people invading their homeland. Hi, everything's great. Jews have always been the kind of out cider in a way um especially once they convert to monotheism um because that was such a rare thing right it was such a, a rare thing and living in this region here obviously puts them really at the mercy of a lot of bigger empires and they're always changing hands right you get them with the persians um where things actually did pretty well uh things were actually pretty well for them um as they were uh, persians pretty tolerant of letting them have their beliefs in those things and then the romans of course come in and try to uh they have a lot more issues because they they believe you need to you know worship the emperor and worship the god so that put them on definitely bad terms with the romans here um but let's go ahead and continue thanks for invading our homeland said the jews who were starting to get tired of people invading their homeland hi everything's great said some guy who seems to be getting very popular and is then arrested and killed for being too popular which only makes him more popular you can make a religion out of this want silk now you can buy it from china they just made a silk so grow the most important Concept. Their own water. Mm -hmm. Sick. New History. trade routes, said India, accidentally spreading their religion to the entire southeast. Yep. Mm, that's a good place for an epic trading. We, we hit hard in, in classes, and they should, about trade. And you, you know, a lot of times with younger people, you're like, uh, you, you're talking about trade, and they're like, oh, that's boring. It's just money and trading, all that. And that's not what you sh we should be focusing on when we talk about trade. It's not people making money and it's not even necessarily the the transfer of the goods themselves oh cool silk is coming over from china and the roman um elites they love it and that sort of thing i mean one thing that's more important is moving of crops and stuff like that but it's the exchange of people and ideas this is how religions spread back then um it's how technology spread how technology that benefits one part of the world affects another and then it, it changes the development of everything and but yeah this is how religion spread it's how technology spreads um people spread languages spread it really is what creates our uh um or changes our society there um trade and warfare really being these these two factors that uh yeah cause cause changes whether for the better or for the worse depends on the the case of course kingdom there goes buddhism traveling up the silk road I buddhism to being one of the great examples again. of um, remember the persian empire religions yep, that said the persians making a new spread axum is getting so powerful they would like to build a long stick has anyone populated madagascar yet let's do it together <laughs> it 
still can't always cross the Sahara Desert. Try. try camels. Hell yeah, now we got business. Huge moment here. Um, the Sahara Desert was basically an impenetrable thing for the uh, for the ancients, right? In this time, I mean, you're talking about a desert that is so brutal, and it's the size of the United States and the uh, United States of America, which meant that connection between Europe or Northern Africa, and really the Middle East, um, to like West Africa or even Central and South Africa was nearly impossible, especially not profitable. And and uh, but there's so much there, obviously, and and and, and uh, that can that can change things. And something as simple as like the yeah, domestication of camels, and something even more than that, the camel saddle is honestly one of the most important inventions of the ancient world. The ability to be able to ride these camels long distances comfortably and be able to um, get goods out of there. Specifically from down here, the two big profitable ones that came out of this part of Africa were um, gold, of course, and salt, um, which were two huge commodities that entered Africa into sort of the global trade network and into relevance with the other empires of the world. Said the Ghana Empire, selling lots of gold. And slaves. Hi, I live in the Roman Empire, and I was wondering, is loving Jesus <laughs> legal yet? No. Actually, okay, sure. Of course, changes. Very late. Way over here to be closer to Roman Empire. Don't worry about Rome. It won't fall. And it's it the golden age of India. India on the cutting edge of Not Chandra, mathematics, Gupta, Gupta. engineering. First name like Chandra. The first. This is, always, uh, this is always a fun one in our classes, because you got the Mauryan Empire with Chandra Gupta. And then you, then long gone, and then you have another emperor centuries later, um, Chandra Gupta. Two words, not related, different empires. Guess who's in Rome? Barbarians. <laughs> Gupta barbarian. dynasty. Non Romans, said the Romans, being invaded by non Romans. All right, it's over for the Empire. West. Or actually, just half of it. The other half is just fine. Corner member, only Western Rome. Rome so falls. let's give it a new name. The Mayans have figured out the stars. Oh, and here's a huge city, population everyone. The Gok Turks have taken over the entire Eurasian steppe. Great job, Gok Turks. How's India? Broken. How's China? Back together. How's those trading kingdoms? Bigger and there's more of them. Korea has three kingdoms. Japan has a kingdom. It's the Sunrise Kingdom. Deep watch in the, the Arabian Japan Desert, video. on the top of a mountain, the real god whispers in Muhammad's ear. So he goes down to the cube where everyone worships Roma gods, and he tells them their gods are all fake. And everyone got so mad at him that he had to leave town and go to a different town. You can make a religion out of this, and maybe conquer the world as well. The Roman Empire is long gone, but somehow the Pope is still the Pope. Plus there's new kingdoms all over Europe. I wonder if there's room for Moors. Here's all the wisdom. In a house. Spanish it's the Muslims. Baghdad House of Wisdom. Just in time for the Islamic Golden Age. Um, the Islamic Golden Age is very important because uh, during a lot of the Middle Ages when a lot of the Greek and Roman classics kind of got swept under the rug, um, a lot of people say it's actually these Muslim scholars are the one that preserve those things. Um, the works of the great Greek philosophers and that um, were preserved by them when they had uh, kind of lost a lot of their relevance and popularity during the European Middle Ages. Um, it's the yeah Islamic scholars that kept that stuff alive and allowed it to be rediscovered later in the Renaissance um, for in Europe. Let's bring stuff to the coast and sell it and become the Swahili on the Swahili coast. <laughs> Said the Swahili on the Swahili coast. Remember this Big tiny space traders. you have to go through to get from here to there? Someone. Very important. See that little strait of water? One of the most important geographic areas in human history. Uh, because just geographically speaking, right? In Asia, whether it's China, um, Southeast Asia, or just uh, Indonesia here with the, the Spice Islands, that little strait of water called the Strait of Malacca, and depends on what time, has been one of the most highly sought after places throughout much of human history. If you control that little tiny strait of water, you unlock sort of the riches of Asia. The spices, the fabrics, I mean everything that, that can come out of there um, for those sea routes. You gotta, gotta have that. So if you're in charge of that little place, you're doing pretty well. But easier said than done owns that now. Want to get enlightened in the middle of nowhere? The Franks have the biggest kingdom in Europe, and the Pope is so proud that he invites the king over for Christmas. Surprise, you're the new Roman emperor, said the Pope, pretending to still be part of the Roman Empire. <laughs> then the Franks broke their kingdom into what will later well, be called not France Roman, and not an empire. France. The northerners, or just Norse if you don't have much time, are exploring. They go north, from the north to the northern north, and they find some land, two types of land, and they name them accordingly. <laughs> they also invade some other places and get called many names, such as Vikings. There's the Rus, the Kievan Rus. Are they Vikings? I don't think so, said the Kievan Rus. Okay, fair enough. The Pope is ready to make some more emperors of the Roman Empire, the Holy Roman Empire. It's actually Germany, but don't worry yeah. about it. 
New kingdoms. All the kingdoms. Which brand would you like? Mine's name, better. Mine's better. Mine's better. Practice. Time to conquer England, said William. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's the Seljuk Turks. <laughs> said the Byzantine Empire, who's getting so small it almost doesn't exist yep. anymore. We need help. They need help. So they call the Pope. Hey, Pope, can you help us get rid of the Seljuks? Maybe take back the Holy Land on the way? Come on, I know you want to take back the Holy Land. Yes, I do actually want to do that. Let's do a crusade. Crusade! They did many crusades, some of which almost didn't fail. But at least the Italians got some sweet trade deals. Goodbye, Mayans. Hello, Toltecs. Goodbye, Toltecs. So many things I will just stop and talk about. Mounds. There's the Pueblo. I always wondered how to build a town and a cliff. Guess who's here? Come here. Where? Here. And Pagan is there. Vietnam unconquered itself, Korea just became itself, and Japan is so addicted to art that the military might have to take over the government. China just invented bombs and typing, and the Mongols just invaded most of the universe. Nice going, Genghis. I bet that will last a long time. Some of the Islamic Turks were unaffected by the Mongol invasions because they were busy invading India. Is it Tonga time? I think it's Tonga time. I just found out where the Swahili gets all their gold. Look at this Chad. Means lake. There's an empire there, right in the middle of Africa. <laughs> the king of Mali is so rich he's going on tour to let it. Mansa Musa, definitely look into this guy. Um, Mansa Musa basically controlled the gold trade coming out of West Africa. Um, some estimates put him as the richest man that has ever lived. I mean, that right there is enough to pique your attention. So if you don't know a lot about Mansa Musa, check him out because he's surrounded by a lot of uh, intrigue and mystery and, and, and things like that, but left uh, a pretty interesting legacy by those that seem to have come in contact with him. So look into that for sure. Everyone know. Wow, that guy's rich, everyone said. The Christians are doing a great job reconquering Iberia, which will soon be called Spain and not Spain. Please remain Christian. We will check in later to see if you're still Christian when you least expect. Whoops, half of Europe just died. China's back, yay! Hey, come here, time to share. New kingdoms here and there. Oh, look who controls all the islands. It's the Mahajapit. Majahapit. Mapajahit. Mahapajit. Mapajahit. Majapahit. Oh, oh, Italy's really rich. Right. Time for them to care a lot about art and the ancient classics. It's kind of like a rebirth. Here's a printer. Let's make books. So you think you can conquer the Byzantine Empire? Yep, said the Ottoman Turks. Nice job, Ottoman Turks. Oops, you missed a spot. Don't forget to ban Europe from the Indian spice trade. What? That's bullshit, said Portugal. Spiceless. Well, I guess we'll have to find another way to India. This is so, so, so important. The fall of Constantinople, right? 1453 is one of the most important events that's ever happened when you talk about events that change history right constantinople um had been ruled by the romans byzantine empire for a millennia right and it's what connect and and taking control of this region right here and at its height you know more into close to mesopotamia obviously it's it's shrunk a lot by then but the, especially the constantinople um, right here has been the gateway to asia for um, Europe and all the trade, everything, that's where it came through, right? Um, you did not, Europeans, no European sailed to Asia. No one, European had ever even sailed around Africa. Nobody, no European even knew how big Africa was. And because they never needed to, right? So when Constantinople falls and the Ottomans take this over, that has blocked the sort of Christian West from their access to the East. Now, money prevails usually and the potential for money especially because the the uh the um profits you can make on the things coming through asia there are just astounding uh, when it comes down to it but of course with the fall of constantinople that means that trade route is now blocked you got to find a new way to asia and that is very difficult because it would take doing something no one has ever done and that is possibly having to establish a sea route but they don't even know if that is possible but when there's the will, there's a will, there's a way. Uh, again, money can fuel all when it comes to these historical processes. Without the fall of Constantinople, there may not be a Columbus and a Vasco da Gama um, because they would not have been necessary characters. You would not need those, those routes. And of course, the domino effect that comes from those people, from da Gama and from Columbus, is going to completely change the history of the world from this point out and a lot of studies of history when you uh if you're a younger person you're going to be taking uh, college history classes they uh usually you're offered two uh, world history classes and where and they're usually by time period and where they usually break that off is they usually say about 1500 um uh and why 
because of this moment right here. The fall of Constantinople is, is almost literally a divider of human history, of human time periods, because everyone is going to be affected by this um, everywhere in the planet. So this is yeah one of the most important things that has happened in the course of human history. And it surprisingly gets overlooked a lot as the, you know, um, it's really surprising and shouldn't be. So you missed a spot. Don't forget to ban Europe from the Indian spice trade. What? That's bullshit, said Portugal. Spiceless. Well, I guess we'll have to go. find another way. Portuguese first. India. Wait, said Christopher Columbus, probably smoking crack. If the world is round, let's go this way to India. No, don't worry, we already got this, said Portugal. So Chris goes to Spain. Hey, Spain, want to hire me to find India by going around back of the world? No, please, no, please, no, please. Okay. So he sails into the ocean and discovers more ocean and then discovers the Indies and Japan. Let's draw a line to decide who gets which half of the world. The Aztec and Inca empires are off to a great start. I wonder if they know that Europe just discovered their continent. The Habsburgs are marrying into so many royal families them, they might you know. have to start marrying each other. Move over, Lithuania. Here comes Moscow. Ivan wants to make Russia great again. Move over, Timurids. Maybe go invade India or something. Persia Long just time? made Persia Persian again. Let's make it the other kind of Islam. The one where we thought the first guy should have been the other guy. Hey, Christians, do you sin? Now you can buy your way out of hell. That's bullshit. This whole thing is bullshit. <laughs> That's a scam. Fuck the church. Here's 95 reasons why, said Martin Luther in his new book, which might have accidentally started the Protestant Reformation. One of the other most important things that's that's happened, especially in the, uh, in the Western Hemisphere, is the... Uh, eventual breaking off of Christians from Catholicism, which has had a monopoly on Christianity and not just Christianity, but religion in Europe um, for a millennia as well. Ever since the Romans adopted it as the kind of the official religion and with a lot of those Germanic tribes, especially the, uh, um, the Franks converting um, to Christianity. And so, yeah, now you get that breakup and of course the domino effect that's going to come from there and religious persecution, which also is a motivating factor for, of course, the, the pilgrims that eventually are going to come out and uh, want to start bringing European colonization out west and that sort of thing. So another uh, early domino. Information. You know what would be magnificent, said Suleiman wearing an onion hat? What if the Ottoman Empire hat. was really big, which it is now? What if Russia was big, said Ivan, trying not to be terrible? Portugal had a dream that they controlled the entire Indian Ocean, including the spice trade. And then that dream was real. And Spain realized that this is not India, but they pillaged it anyway. Still Damn, profitable, said England though. and France. We gotta start pillaging some stuff. Then the Dutch revolt and all the hipsters moved to Amsterdam. Well, everyone's Damn, trying said to Amsterdam. follow suit. We gotta start pillaging some stuff. Question one, can you get to India Britain, through France, North America? Dutch, no, but at least there's beaver. Go. Question two, steal the spice trade. Party. That's not a question. Yeah, that was the other thing, you know. So, they obviously, with Columbus, they find out, okay, there's not an obvious direct route that we you know of at the, at the point but that didn't necessarily necessarily mean that there's not couldn't be one right so what you get with the british the french and the dutch which is finding try to confirm is there a way to sail west to get to asia and you see these different um chances the british try to go up north can't do that because canada's in the way um and then the idea of is there a passageway through sort of the americas um, and you see uh, the French especially do that when they go what's, and explore what's going to be the St. Uh, Lawrence River, get over here, up by the Great Lakes and all that, find out you can't. And then later on, uh, Magellan and his crew going south of America, of South America to go west, but that's a completely inefficient way to do that. So they it took a lot of trial and error to eventually figure out it's just not it's not efficient. It's not real feasible. It doesn't make a lot of sense to actually try to trade with Asia by sailing west. But they tried about every possible way, north, south, through everything, and just kept failing. Because it's not possible. Yeah, through North America. No, but at least there's beaver. Question two. Steal the Let's spice trade. That's not later. a question, but the Dutch did it anyway. Guess the Dutch replaced the uh, in Brazil, Portuguese Dolan, in the Caribbean. And it's so goddamn profitable, uh, you might forget empire, to not do slavery. The, the next empire, thing on Egypt? Russia's to-do list is to get bigger. Britain and France are having a friendly discussion about who should control the entire world. More specifically, Ohio. Seven then it war? escalates into a seven-year discussion, yeah. giving Prussia a chance to show Austria who's boss. But what about Britain and France? Um, I've done a video uh, for or for the Seven Years War. Make sure you look into that. That's another huge event that is going to have a lot of domino effects with it too. Is uh, the Spanish and the British, or sorry, the Spanish and the Portuguese, uh, by the 1700s were not at the peak, right? This is Britain and France's sort of imperial golden age, and they are now looking to uh, assert themselves as imperial powers um, in both hemispheres in Asia and the Americas. So um, they're going to kind of assume the new um, 
kind of role as the um, biggest, most powerful imperial forces that are coming out of Europe. Did they figure out who's boss? Yes, they did. It's Britain. Guess who's broke? Also Britain. So they start taxing the hell out of America. Fuck you, says America, declaring their independence and fighting for it. And France helps them win. Now France is broke. See the dominoes Britain happening here. to send here. their prisoners to a different continent. Wait, if France is broke, why do the king and queen still wear such fancy dresses? Let's overthrow the palace yeah. and cut all their heads off, French said Revolution. Robespierre, cutting everybody's head off until someone... Did a video on French Revolution as well. You can make you a religion. No, don't. Haiti is starting to like the idea of a revolution, <laughs> especially the slaves who free themselves by killing their masters. Why didn't we think of this before? Um, one of the only real successful slave revolts in history is the Haitian Revolution, um, um, with a group that, as slaves, actually won, fought, and successfully won their independence. The Haitian Revolution um, should definitely be studied more. Wait, who's in charge of France now? Was Napoleon. Napoleon trying to take over Europe? Luckily, they banished him to an island. But he came back. <laughs> Luckily, they banished him to another island. <laughs> there goes Latin America becoming independent in the Latin American Wars of Independence. Uh, you see imperialism and ending. Steam into power. Now they can make and many different types of machines and First factories revolution. with machines in them, so they can make a lot of products. Make the dominoes fall even faster. Then they invent some trains and conquer India and maybe put some trains there. Hey, China, said Britain, buy stuff from us. Nah, dude, we already got everything, yeah. says China. So Britain tried to get them addicted. Important point. People always ask. People ask. Why? Why weren't China? Why isn't China the one that did industrialization and a whole bunch of overseas foreign imperialism? It's pretty simple. They don't need to. Europe, as compared to China, lacks in population and resources to be able to compete with large regions um, that have a lot of resources like China and, 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 and resources and, and population like China and India, right? If places like Britain, for example, want to compete economically with a, a powerhouse like China or India, they have to find ways to overcome their lack of geography and their lack of population, which necessitates the industrial revolution. So we talk about like India and China. Why didn't they do that? They don't need to, they have all the resources they need. They don't depend on imports at all. And they have a population um, that is so large that in fact, if you industrialize, you would put people out of work. Um, that's why for most of history, India had been the largest producer of um, things like cotton and things like that, because you had such a huge population, um, a, a workforce, and um, of course, when you have that large of a workforce, you can keep wages very low. Um, so it was very productive the way they do that. In fact, yeah, like I was saying, industrializing would potentially hurt those societies in a way because um, you'd be putting people out of work. So it has nothing to do with a lack of ingenuity or anything like that, because you cannot make that case. Uh, it's, it's all about supply, demand, and need. Um, but what you're starting to see here is industrial revolution is taking Britain further than probably, or places like Britain that do this um, further than anyone would have thought. And eventually comes to the point where their small size doesn't matter anymore. And in fact, they've overcome that so much that they can outproduce um, and, uh, and and technologically be more advanced and militarily be more advanced that their small size no longer matters. In fact, they can dominate over these large nations uh, when you could not have up until this point in history addicted to opium, which worked actually. But then China made it illegal and dumped it all into the sea. So Britain threw a hissy fit and made them open up five cities and give them an island. Britain and Russia are playing a game where they try to stop each other from conquering Afghanistan. Also, the Sultan of Oman lives in Zanzibar now. That's just where he lives. India just had a revolution and they would like to govern themselves now. Nope, said Britain, governing them Failed. harder than before. It took away most of their dependence for the next hundred years. Technology is about to go crazy. The United States finally figured out whether slavery is good or bad. It's bad, they decided. And then they continued manifesting their destiny, which is to kill the rest of the natives. Imperial and America. And maybe kick out the Mexicans, too. I know. Let's rape Africa, said Europe, scrambling to see who could rape it the fastest. There's your um, evidence, too, of, of, of technological advancement. The scramble for Africa here um, showed where what industrialization and European imperialism has now come to virtually the entire continent of Africa was able to be conquered by a foreign force that has smaller pay population, but has more um, economic power and military power and virtually the entire continent besides Ethiopia, which you'll see over here. And then um, Liberia in the West. Uh, but basically the whole place got um, carved up like a big piece of pizza for a good seven or so um, European nations involved in here and starts this imperial era uh, which doesn't end 
for a long time. They never got so after the world wars, really. Britain and France are still hungry. They never got Thailand. The United States ran out of destiny to manifest, so they're looking for more. Hi, Cuba. Wait, Spain controls Cuba. Well, blame something on them and go to war. What should we blame on Spain? Let's blame the main on Spain. Nope. So they blame the main on Spain. Now we're in business. To celebrate, they kick Panama out of Panama and make a canal connecting the two oceans. There you go. Britain just found oil in the Middle East. It makes cars. Go. Oil, man. China is so tired of being what? bossed around that they delete their old government and make a new, stronger government, which is accidentally weaker and controlled by a guy from the previous government. Europe hasn't had a war since the last war, so they start World War so I. Look at those China guns. Design. It's going to be a great war. So great we won't need a second. Yeah, war to end all wars, After right? it's over, they blame Germany. Russia went on strike and the workers overthrew the government. Now everyone's paycheck is the same. Communism. In the Soviet Union. The Arabs revolt and Britain helps. Now the Ottoman Empire's gone, so we can give the Jewish people a place to live. Hopefully the Arabs won't mind. Let's cut the cake, uh, said Sykes and Picot, carving up the remains of the not so Ottoman anymore empire. Except Turkey, Turkey, Turkey makes a too. brand new Turkey. And then the Saudis conquer Arabia. It just seemed like the right thing to do. Hello? Yes, it's the 1920s calling. Let's get in the car and drive to a party and listen to jazz on the radio and go to the movies. The economy's great and it'll probably here. be great forever. It's short-lived though, Germany's because yep, featuring Hitler, course. the angry mustache model, and he's mad at there the Jews go. for existing. Japan is finally conquering the East, and they're so excited they raped Nanking way too hard. They should probably just deny it. Hitler's out of control, so the international community tackles him and tries to explain why killing all the Jews is a bad idea. But he kills himself before they could explain it to him. That's World War Two. Bonus round, watch my World Pacific one showdown: two videos, United States versus on Japan. Looking for more fight. fight. Finish him. <laughs> Let's unite all the nations and have some yes. world peace. Seems legit. Hi, I'm Gandhi, and if Britain doesn't get the hell out of India, I'm going to starve myself <laughs> in public. Wow, that worked. Bonus, now there's Pakistan. Actually, yep. Pakistan's. One of them could be Bangladesh later. The Jews so and the Arabs finally figured out which one of them should live in the Holy Land. India. Me, they both said at the same time. Let's divide up the land so everyone's happy. Yes, with no, uh, Look out, China. There's a new China in China. What's on the menu? Communism. No thanks, said the other China, escaping to an island. I wonder which one is the real China. There's the Korean War. Korea versus Korea. Nobody wins. Then it's on pause forever. Let's meet the sponsors. Oh, it's the two global the superpowers. They're having a friendly anywhere. debate over which economic system is good and which one is an evil virus of Satan. And they both have atom bombs. Fight! Wait, no, that would be the end of the world. Let's just keep it cool and spy on each other instead. And make sure we have enough atom bombs. I'll race you to space. Now let's make some more countries fight themselves. Europe is tired of pillaging other continents, and the continents they were pillaging are tired of being pillaged. So here's a new map with new countries. Yeah. Now you can't tell who they're being pillaged by. Everyone's a little the United separate States finally too, decided so. whether racism is good or bad. They decided it's bad. The world agrees. Being South Africa might need another minute to think about it. Let's check the Still world population. On. Whoa. Okay. Yep. That's an issue. Technology's better too. That might keep happening. The Soviet Union here. decides to relax a little and accidentally falls apart. Europe makes a union, so now they can all use the same money. Except Britain, because they don't feel like it. Let's check the mail. Surprise, it's on the computer. Whoops, someone just attacked America. I bet they'll remember that. Phone call. Surprise, it's in your pocket. Want to learn everything? Surprise, it's on the computer. Now your phone's a computer, which is in your pocket. Whoops, the economy just crashed. Don't worry, the big banks won't fail, because they're not supposed to. Surprise, flying robots with bombs. Want to print a brain? Some people have no friends. Some people have no food. The globe is warming. And the ocean is full of plastic. Let's save the planet, said everybody, not knowing how. Let's invent a thing inventor, said the thing inventor inventor after being invented by a thing inventor. That's pretty cool. By the way, where the hell are we? All right. Gosh, so much to say, right? So many things to stop, but you would have an infinite amount of stops there. Uh, great video. Usually at the end of this video, you know, the students that have still have like the mental stamina to go through that are like afterwards, like, oh, my brain is, you know, melting at this point. It's like a, almost like a physical workout to your brain. Cause you come out of that, like, holy cow. And it's, you know, and you're like, oh, get, whoa, 20 minutes passed. You know what I mean? Cause it's just nonstop feeding and, um, a lot of fun. Now these videos, they're great. Uh, they, they're not like a lot of people, I, I see a lot of reaction videos. There's a ton of reaction videos on these um, from people. And they're always like, man, I wish I had that in school and that sort of thing. And, you know, and I've thought about that. But if, think about it this way. Could you use that much of a teaching tool? Like, could you, could you assess, could you like do an assessment based off of this? I don't really think you could. I think it's pretty good. Um, not as... Uh, not as an introductory thing, but it could be useful, I think, at the end of learning. Like I was saying, like at the end of the year, you just, oh, yeah, you know, I have my students that are like, oh, yeah, I remember that now. I remember this now. But you're probably not going to learn 
long term a lot of new things from it but it is entertaining so i do see that a lot from reactors about oh it's how we should be teaching but i don't think you could assess in this format um it's far more again more entertaining and it's just fun to, to touch back on but that's kind of my thoughts on that and i think the use of this specifically something like over um or oversimplified which is a little more detailed and slower paced could be more as used as a lesson or again i don't think this could but um regardless of this video i could watch it every day it's just it's great it's it's funny and, and great information um all over the place so be sure to give bill wertz um your uh your your thanks you know give him the the like and view subscribe and all that kind of stuff um i'll leave the original videos linked down below um as well but again thanks to everybody that recommended this um even though i'd seen it before you know had to do a video on it and i'm fine with doing that and if uh um, you'd like to see more um videos of course uh leave your own comments and if you have anything you want to add to this video anything um is there anything in there that you thought bill got wrong um add that to the comment section let's let's look at it let's talk about it um let's make uh this channel that you're on right now a place so we can also dialogue respectfully with each other and i think that's great we all we all kind of win in that scenario so all right well with that i think we'll go ahead and um call it a video here thanks for watching once again and we'll see you soon